Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings of the day. Thank you that we're all here safe. God, we just ask you to be with us during this meeting. Guide us to lead us, give us direction. Be with all the participants here tonight and give us a safe journey back home in the name of Christ. Amen. Yes. If you would stand with us, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting. Um, Mr. Chairman, I've already spoke with staff, but I, I found one or two minor typos. I think um, basically one was addressing uh, the addressing of one uh, board member. The other was clarification on who uh, the district Mr. McKnight was, that he was a representative. And then the last was in the uh, vote where Ms. Harper recused herself. Uh, that vote was six to zero, not seven to zero. Okay. So staff has those um, those. Madam Administrator, you got those? Yes, sir, I do. Those okay. corrections. Is there any other errors or deletions or corrections? Barring that, I, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes as recorded. No, 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 with, with those amendments. With, need, yes, to, well, yes, sir, with the amendments that, that staff has. Yeah, put that in the motion, please. I'd like to make, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes with the amendments that staff has. Is there a motion to accept the minutes with the amendments um, so spoken of? Is there a second? I Seconded by uh, Sammy Reeves. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed say aye. Unanimous. All right. First item up tonight will be the variance request for exception applicants of variance for section 1014 to reduce the setback requirement for an accessory structure. Madam Administrator. Yes, sir. The first item for your consideration is a variance request. Uh, the location is 1017 Trotters Boulevard. Uh, it's a single family residential dwelling. It's been around for a while. Uh, the applicant had several years ago constructed a, sh a shed. Uh, a complaint was brought to our office um, uh, about the location of the shed more recently, uh, prompting us to look into it and determine that it had been built without a permit, um, which resulted in it being located closer to the uh, property line than permitted. Uh, accessory structures have to be located in rear or side property uh, areas. With a five foot setback from the property lines, the subject structure is about a foot off the property line. So they are looking for variants in order to be able to leave it where it is. Trotters Ridge subdivision, they're all larger lots, they're about a third of an acre, some go all the way up to three quarters. Most have homes with detached accessory structures on them, such as garages, sheds, or pools. Um, the large sides of the lots generally provide the needed space to meet the setback requirements. There is a 25-foot drainage easement along the rear of the property uh, that would prevent the shed from being located closer to the rear. However, there's really nothing that appears to prevent the shed from being shifted another four feet into the lot at the time of the construction. If the permit had been applied for before the shed was placed on the property, the setbacks would have been reviewed and confirmed at that time. I will note that a denial of the variance will require the homeowner to remove the shed, redo the foundation, and then rebuild the shed on the new foundation. Um, just a reminder, uh, South Carolina requirements for a variance, you have those four criteria. The applicant did answer those four questions in their application, and they were provided to you for your consideration. You were also provided, uh, we did receive one comment, so that was given to you, provided for your consideration as well. After reviewing the request, the staff provides the following facts. One, that the lot in question is a conforming residential lot with no unusual features. Two, other properties in the vicinity have developed with primary and accessory structures on the same lot that meet setback requirements. Three, the lot, although encumbered by a rear drainage easement, has the space to accommodate the shed and meet the setback requirements. 
and four, the authorization of the variance to allow the placement of the shed would not be a detriment to adjacent properties as the property has been used in that capacity for a number of years without complaint. Based on these facts, staff finds that the application does not meet the requirements for a variance and therefore staff recommends denial. Anyone else, anyone have any questions of the administrator? This time we'll open the public hearing. Anyone here wish to speak for or against this project, please stand at this time. Everyone wishes to speak. Would you raise your right hand, please? Mr. Thomas Webb, there's a testimony you're about to give us the truth and the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. If you would, please approach the podium and identify yourself. Are you the petitioner? Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Thomas Orschel. I live at 1017 Trotters Boulevard. Um, the shed in question uh, was a replacement of a shed that was already there. Um, didn't know that it needed a permit. So what we did was I, I had to get a larger, uh, larger shed. So I tore the old one down and I built a new one. Um, the old one was closer to the, to the uh, complainant's fence than our structure was okay or is i should say um the, the problems that i'm having is mainly with the neighbor as far as the setback goes uh, there wouldn't have been any problem there if the neighbor um uh, was mad at us yeah he yeah he's just mad at us uh, yeah he's he he's vengeful he wants to get back he he planted a stupid bush on our property I took it out. He didn't like that. He accosted me three times while I was taking it out. The sheriff's department came, wanted to know if I wanted him arrested. And I said, I just want to take care of this. I don't want any more messing around. I, I, I said, all we want to do is just drop it. As far as the request, why it was requested, uh, because I, I did what I did, uh, the, the officer uh, told me to get a restraining order on him. So I put a request in. Well, our, my next door neighbor, Mr. Saavedra, found out about that. He came up to me. He said, could you please just drop that? And I said, well, I, I said, are, are you still going to be pushing this uh, request as far as my, my shed goes? He said, no. He says, that's getting dropped. I said, okay, then I said, I'll, I'll drop the uh, restraining order. Five days after I dropped the restraining order, I had a code enforcement guy at my door with a complaint. So uh, all I can say is that we need to get a permit for it. Okay, I, I, um, that's something that I messed up on. But the thing is, as far as the shed goes, uh, Moving it or trying to tear it down or whatnot, that thing is on, it's on 30 inch deep, 15 inch diameter piles with a spread footer underneath them. I had 10 of them. I, I dug them myself. I poured them myself. I've got retaining rods in each one of them, okay? I've got six by six timbers on there on each one of them to support the floor. The plastic shed I put on there has interlocking floor. Okay, that gets put on first, and then the walls get built from there. There's locking tabs in the bottom. So I would have to tear the full shed down. I would have to take the six by sixes out along with all the reinforcing steel and everything I have in there. Then I have to knock the, uh, the 10 piles down that I poured. Um, the, the shed right now is farther away than the shed that was there prior to it. And why my neighbor didn't complain about that prior to that, I don't know. But the only reason he's doing this is he's vengeful. Okay. Another reason is that if I do move it over the four and a half feet, I can't place the shed on any other part of that property. If you take a look at the picture of it. I don't know if you can see it or not. We, we have it. In front oh, okay. Okay. There is no other place I can put that. I've got two trees in the backyard. I've got an island between the trees. I've got raised gardens on one side, and I can't put it any farther back than it goes because I got an electrical box 
It's a ground-mounted electrical box. I can't put it back there because I would be infringing on the, the uh, drainage utilities. easement. Okay, if I would have to leave it in the same location and move it four and a half feet towards my deck, wood deck. Okay, that would leave me 86 inches between the edge of the shed and, and, it's not, and the raised deck. Okay, a standard size backhoe is 92 inches. Okay, in order to get a backhoe down in there because the county requires access to the drainage easement if they have to maintain it. Okay, so I'm kind of stuck. If I can't put it any other place on my property. If I move it closer, if I bring it up to standards, um, the county won't be able to access the back, as well as having a vengeful neighbor that doesn't really care. He just wants me to tear it down, just because I moved a plant he planted on my property. Okay, anything else? That's it. Anyone have any questions of this petitioner? What are you keeping in the shed? Excuse me? What do you keep in the shed? I've got a tractor, a John Deere tractor. I've got uh, a rototiller. I've got um, my mower. I've got a spreader. I've got um, a composter in there. I've got floats for the pool. How big is it? It's 10 feet, three inches by 18 feet. All right, so this is a slab on grade construction? It's raised on piers. It's on piers, so you have a crawl space underneath it? No, or? no, no. That's, it's slab on grade. Yeah, then. it's it's maybe six to eight inches high underneath. What I did was I filled that with stone to make sure I didn't have any varmints underneath there. So. All right. Thank you. Okay. You built the shed? I did. How many years? Seven, Seven years. Seven years ago. Seven years. Yeah. How long have you lived as resident? Uh, this will be nine coming up. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? The existing shed, was, was it there when you purchased the property? Yes, sir. Yes. But, I'm sorry, this new shed's only been there for, it's been there for seven years? Yes. We're just now hearing about it? Like I say, I just tore okay. the, his bush out this past spring. And yep. uh, it, I left it there for, for two years because we didn't have a survey. As far as finding the pins, my wife knew where the pin was. And I tried to tell him and the, uh, Mr. Saavedra that he wouldn't listen to me. So what happened was, I, I told her, I said, we might as well stop. I don't want to get in a fight here and now. I says he's not going to change his mind by seeing a steel pin in the ground. He was just set. He says it's his property, and he'll do with it what he wants. And where he got that from, I don't know. I know he didn't have a survey done. We did. Okay. We, we came through. We had a uh, property survey done. It had uh, the property lines all staked out and everything. The, the stakes were in place when I was taking the, the bush down. And he came out and he accosted me several times. So, what, um, How much overhang you got on the eaves? The eaves are about eight inches. Eight inches. Okay. So back off, off of the property line. Um, six inches off the eaves to the property line. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this matter? Please step forward, identify yourself. You didn't, did you stand a while ago and take the oath, sir? I can't hear you. Uh, come on, step, come up to the podium, please. Did you stand a minute ago and take the oath that I gave? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Identify yourself, please. J.W. Long. J.W. Long? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm a neighbor on this side of, of Tom and Jan. Um, I don't, I'm here supporting him. This is, I've been a member of the board, the presence of the boards here. I've been a member of the board of Homeowner Association. Never had a problem with Tom and Jane. We've had a lot of problems with the neighbor. He's, um, i just give you one example when the board, when he was burning household garbage in his backyard. I couldn't, we went to him and he sent me an email and said that that's not the way we do things in Chicago. He's from Chicago and I sent him an email back, he's not in Chicago anymore. He didn't like that. 
He's been a very vindictive type of guy. I have no problem with the building. This is just a feud between them two. Uh, I don't think the homeowner association has a problem with the building. It's a nice little building. <laughs> we got a lot of problems, but this shouldn't be one of them. So I will support them on this variance. Thank you. Are there any members of Thank the you. committee have any questions, Mr. Long? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak for or opposed to this project? If not, I declare the public hearing closed. Is this time to chair? Do you have any questions? Are there any further questions of the administrator before we vote? None. Hearing none. I, I do. Is there, just educate me, is there a um, time limit on, like if a building was, you know, put up and it's on the line, so 30 years from now we can go back and... No, there's no time limit. There's no time Yeah, no, if there's a zoning violation, there's, there's no time limit on it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? At this time, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, um, despite the evidence presented by staff, um, I think that the variant should be requested because there is no immediate detriment uh, to any of the neighborhood or the co-joining landowners in this case. And so therefore, I uh, uh, move to approve the variance. There's a motion to approve the variance. Um, is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Sammy Reeves. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, unanimous, motion passed. Second item. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's about now? Nothing. Nothing. Enjoy your life. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the staff will be in touch with you with some legal documents uh, once everything has been processed, but other than that, nothing. Mm -hmm. um, second item up is um, deeming way of variance to relocate an accessory structure in the front yard. <clears throat> yes, sir. The second item is another variance. It's also for an accessory structure. In this case, it's a request to locate an accessory structure in the front yard. Again, accessory structures are intended to be located in the rear or side yard. The piece of property in question is located at 231 Deming Way, which places it within the industrial park. Uh, it's already developed with a building. Uh, other buildings nearby, I believe right next door to it, is the Dorchester County Water and Sewer Building, and I think across the street is the DOT Building. Um, they're looking to place solar panels between the building and Deming Way. This lot is considered a corner lot. It has frontage along Deming Way as well as up the side street, which is East Port Lane. So it technically has a front yard abutting Deming Way, another front yard along East Port, and then the other two yards are considered side yards. Um, so if they were locating an accessory structure, it would need to be either in, the, in either of the side yards back behind the buildings. Uh, wouldn't be able to be located in, the, in either of the front yards. They have submitted with their application um, a site plan showing that they do want to place the solar panels between Deming and the building, which would put it in this area. They indicate that that's, that's where they get the best sun exposure. Um, and staff, we will, I'll note that there is another set of solar panels in the vicinity that are in the front yard. These, however, were approved on the interpretation of prior staff who viewed it as a utility use as opposed to an accessory structure, and, and we don't currently hold that interpretation. So um, there is a difference there between those two. The solar panels, it appears, would be able to fit in either of these side yards. I think it would require clearing in the in the back here to remove some trees to locate it. But you've got about 150 feet off the property line to the building here, about 200 feet off the property line to the building here. Again, it doesn't provide the same sun exposure as it does here, but there is space to fit them within the existing side yards. Again, a reminder that the state has those four criteria for considering a variance. 
Um, the application did provide answers to those four questions within their application, and it was provided to you within your packets. After reviewing the request, staff provides the following facts. One, that the lot in question, it's a conforming industrial lot, uh, doesn't have any unusual features, uh, and there is an existing building on site. Two other properties in the vicinity have developed with primary and accessory structures on the same lot that meet setback and location requirements. Three, although not situated for maximum exposure, the lot has the space to accommodate solar panels where they would comply with location requirements. Four, the authorization of the variance to allow the placement of the solar panels in the front yard would not be a detrimental to adjacent properties as the site is located within an industrial park and does not front on a main arterial. Based on these facts, however, staff finds that the application does not meet the requirements for a variance and therefore recommends denial of the request. Any members of the committee have any questions of the administrator? I, I, I do, Chair, but you're, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I kind of have a hard time swallowing why the office, the zoning office, would not see this as the same utilization as Dion. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we have, we have two industrial properties. Sure, uh, it was a mistake. Industrial areas, yep. And we're talking about front. Right. Yard so, at, uh, you know, before. what happened with Kion is that the person reviewing the set of plans at the time interpreted solar panels as a utility use um, under a different use group category, making it a primary use on the property. But the definition when you look at it for utility use is that it be part of a regional interconnected network, not that it's just serving that building and maybe if there's a little bit extra that it, that it um, you know, might feed into the system. But you're talking about a, an SCE&G, you know, or Dominion substation, transmission lines. You're not we, talking we know, individual systems. Do we know that Kion actually contributes back to the grid? I don't know. And even if they did, it still wouldn't be considered a utility use. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it was an error of interpretation at that time. Sure. So, so the potential precedent was made in error. Correct. Any other further questions for the administrator? The, the, other, the other part was, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. No, go ahead, go ahead. Explain to me more about the analysis of number four, where the authorization of the variance to mm -hmm. allow placement of solar panels in the front yard would not be detrimental. Correct. I mean, this is an industrial park, so you've got all kinds of heavy industrial uses out there. A lot of them don't require a buffering, and this, this isn't fronting on Highway 78 or another main thoroughfare. This so, is, you know, on Deming, which is internal to the industrial park. So would this not be contradictory to actually allowing a variance, mm -hmm. that it's not detrimental to... No, you have to meet all four criteria. So even though it meets this one criteria, you'd have to be able to show that you meet the other three criteria in order to qualify for the variance. Okay. Any further questions? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, also, if we notice um, this piece of property under the comprehensive plan, the history of this plan is back in 1984. This is old, that um, district area is old. Property. So some of that stuff that Mr. Hay was talking about probably failed and pick it up during that time. Because the only history on this property is 1984, it looks like. And yeah, the that's not the plan, industrial the in place. The didn't go in place until 2004, I think, 2003. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Hearing none, we now open the public hearing. Anyone here wishes to speak for or against, please stand. Raise your right hand, please, sir. Be silent swear the information you're about to give is the truth and the whole truth that will help you, God. Would you please approach the podium, identify yourself, and state why you're here. Uh, my name is Fred Baker with Caroline Energy Conservation. We're the contractor that has been hired to do this project. Um, Two of the notes that were made about the two other locations on the property, I did want to make a note of. Um, there is already a building structure going up on the side lot that you can see cleared out on the photo there. And they have building plans for that wooded lot to also extend that building, which would negate those from being possible sites for the solar. Um, the one has already started construction, it is in the building plans. And then the other one, um, it's a rapidly growing company that's there, um, American Tactical. So those two locations wouldn't be viable places for us to install. 
Um, I would be happy to answer any other questions that maybe are preventing the, uh, the approval of that. Like you have mentioned, there are other locations within a single mile from this location that has direct frontage to a main street. Mm -hmm. um, and the white, I'm sorry, the sun access for this location where the property is, for them to get a true return on their investment and what they're looking to spend to do this, this truly is the only location that, that would provide that for them. Any members of the committee have any questions of this gentleman? Kind of question, what are they doing in this building? Is it just an admin, industrial, um, manufacturing, production, what? They make ammunitions. Ammunitions. Mm -hmm. So they, they sell directly to um, police in the area, sheriff's departments, and large-scale weapons as well. How big of a solar panel area is this? How much area? Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a 144 kilowatt system, so it's going to be six ground mount arrays. All right, and they expect to run. Uh, what, per, how much of a percentage of their power is going to come from the solar panels? We're estimating 50 to 60 percent based on current usage. All right, and that's that's an eight-hour day or daylight. Um, for our area, it's actually considered 10 that you get a good sunlight that'll produce. Could they work? Okay, so they can work. Uh, that would provide power to the facility for that uh, for a 10-hour period. Yes, you and then what happens though is it will produce excess energy that will be sold back to Dominion, and then Dominion will credit them. So they may not be able to use all the solar as it's being produced inside the building. But Dominion has it set up so they're going to produce more than what they're using with the system. So that way, five, six o'clock in the evening when the solar system is shutting down because it's not getting the sun, they'll have sold enough back to Dominion that it'll help offset their usage going into the evening because they do produce um, into the evening hours. And that's projected right now? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Any further questions in the committee? I, I have a question, mm -hmm. just real quick. Um, are you familiar with the Kion solar panels? Um, I've on driven by them to see them because I found out about this zoning. So area. yeah, I consider that a huge solar field as you're driving down 78. Um, and I'm all for solar. I well, thank you very much. So, uh, but on what scale is this? A, a little bit smaller scale than what they have? Is it? approximately the same size this will actually be a little bit smaller than okay. what they have on the ground mount on top mm -hmm. of that they also have an entire roof mount system yes there yep all right great thank you yeah mr Day, i think that was my next question what's the obvious about why isn't this roof mounted you i you can't see it from here but all of the different accessory structures that they do have on top of there mm -hmm. from ac units to um for their manufacturer and they have to have vent pipes and things coming up sure. there. We did do an analysis on that and- Bottom it, line, there's just a lot of obstacles. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. What you gonna do with all the dead batteries down the road? <laughs> um, thankfully, they, they have a way to recycle those, so- uh, What that one do you? <laughs> we're, we're gonna put it in the hands of Elon Musk. Germany's doing right, put them in a big field and hope somebody wants them one day, but they don't. Well, this, this, uh, this project doesn't have any batteries tied to it. You do the resurface cell phones. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else here wish to speak for or against this project? If not, we declare the public hearing closed. We have any further questions of the administrator before we vote? Hearing none, at this time the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve the variance for the solar panel uh, location as it's not going to be a detriment um, to surrounding properties as it's in the industrial park. I have a motion to approve with, a stip with the understanding that it's not going to be a detriment to anything around it. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Who's, who is that? That was Mr. Dixon. Second it. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. 
One, four, and five against. Uh, five, four, and one against. I'm sorry. Motion passed. <clears throat> At this time, the next item on the agenda is a special exception request for assisted living and personnel on Quaker Road. Madam Administrator. Yes, sir. The last item for your consideration tonight is a special exception request. This is out on uh, 1513 Quaker Road, which is outside St. George. This is for an assisted living slash personal care home on the subject property. There currently is an existing residential dwelling on the property. The applicant is looking to convert that into a living, uh, assisted living care facility. The application indicates that probably about four people would be living in there plus a uh, staff, an on-site staff member that'll be operating on a 24 seven basis. So the on-site staff will provide housing, meals, supervision, transportation. The area is rural uh, with residences and agricultural fields. There's probably about three dozen homes within a half mile of the lot, um, but staff anticipates that this would have um, minimal impact. It would mimic other residential homes in the area. The group homes are generally classified um, or group homes for protected classes of individuals are generally protected under Federal Fair Housing Act. Uh, they tend to be considered a natural family as if related by blood or marriage. And uh, while there may be protected classes of individuals, we're, staff wasn't clear if the home would serve exclusively protected individuals. So brought the request to the Board of Zoning Appeals to be processed as a special exception just in case. Um, the Quaker Road is a state-maintained major collector, which is sufficient to support this type of use. The uh, area designation for the comprehensive plan future land use map is rural neighborhood, which is intended to preserve useful agricultural lands, uh, reserve agriculture, low density developments, promote architecture in keeping with the low country and rural character. And this application does that by reusing the existing home uh, in a residential manner. They are achieving that. Um, they're also working to bring additional housing options into an underserved area of the county. So staff, after reviewing the request, and I will note that they did provide those answers to those 30 questions required for a special exception. Those were included in your packet. Um, staff has the following findings. One, that institutional uses require a special exception in the absence of control zoning district. Two, impacts are expected to be minimal and will mimic other residential homes in the area. Three, the area is primarily residential and agricultural. Four, Quaker Road is a state-maintained major collector and able to support this use. And five, the recommendations of the comprehensive plan and the future land use designation support this use at this site. And therefore, based on these facts, staff recommends approval of the request for an assisted living or personal care home. Do the members of the committee have any questions of the administrator? Hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. Everyone that wishes to speak for or against this project, would you please stand? Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear that the information you're about to give is the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Would you please approach the podium, identify yourself. Take your, when you get up there, please slip your mask down so we can understand you. Uh, state your name and what your position is, please. Hi, my name is Megan Jacobs. I am the applicant that requested this assistant living home. Um, and the reason why is because it's no assistant living homes within say a 38 mile radius. Um, and it's a personal, it's personal for me because my mom passed away in 2012 of Alzheimer's and my grandmother passed away a couple years ago. So um, that's what prompted me to say, hey, it's a need for this in our area. All we have is a nursing home and it's normally always full. So if it is full, we have to go out um, third, anywhere from 30 to 30 minutes to an hour out to get care for our um, loved ones or you know, just anyone in that area if it is full. So to help eliminate that, I wanted to start an assistant living home, hopefully be able to branch out from there, open up more, because the closest one um, to St. George that I found during my research was in Bowman, South Carolina. And as you all know, um, when you have someone you care about, you wanna be able to have access to them pretty fairly quickly and be able to check on them on a regular basis when they are in these um, facilities. So that's the purpose. Um, 
of wanting to establish that. Uh, and I wanted to know if you all have any questions. Anyone have any questions this petition? How far out of town are you located? Am I located? Well, I'm back and forth. I currently reside in Georgia. Um, How about this, this, this one? This piece of property? Um, it's about five, five, yeah, about five miles. I would say about eight minutes out from the town of St. George. Okay, I see a building that looks like it's encroaching on another piece of property. Is that part of what you're gonna utilize? Um, that looks to be the a shed. Yeah. Well, is that the one you said? We just went through this in another <laughs> scenario, and I don't want to go through this again. Right, right. Well, we own we own all that land, so it's not necessarily the property adjoining that the shed is on. Also, correct. Thank you, ma'am. Good, right answer. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? <laughs> um, so tell me a little bit more about who may be intended to stay there who you know is there any specific group or or, or individual um t tell me a little more about who you anticipate you know using the facility right so the facility is going to be available available to whether it's short-term or long-term care <laughs> depending on availability um but it's going to pertain to elderly as well as those who may be disabled um maybe mental issues maybe like autism or just someone who can't mm -hmm. maybe function totally independently on their own but they are independent so they just need a little bit of help as far as you know making sure they are they have meals make sure they get to their doctor's appointments if they can't um drive um bathing just any you know need that they may have that's not necessarily um medical related in terms of needing a nurse Mm -hmm. But um, they just need a little bit of assistance. They need supervision. And they, they need supervision, but they also want independence. How many employees do you anticipate being on shift at, at this facility? So on shift, I want to, well, I will have someone actually staying there. I also have another room in the home so that I can have someone there 24-7 just to oversee mm -hmm. everything, make sure they have breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, and that their needs are met. I will also have, of course, and, and this is another reason to have it because it'll also be um, opportunity to provide jobs in an underserved area. So I'll also be having people come to cater or people coming to um, relieve the other person. You know, it'll probably be at least three people mm -hmm. at any given time for different things that may be needed. Okay. Um, one of the last things, because I know that this has been... Um, this has come up personally. I know people that have been affected by this, and it it's not in an assisted care program, but um, what safeguards will you have in place so that, uh, because you are close to a road, and I had read some letters in here about uh, some buffering and, and some concerns about that. What do you do to anticipate, you know, not, not having runners, for, for lack of better terms? Okay. You know, someone to get out of the house in the middle of the night, maybe be struck or get lost in the community, you know, what, what kind of safeguards would you have, I guess, internally or staffed versus if there were a buffer or a fence around the property to actually enclose people from getting out? Right. Well, we do plan to actually, I'm glad you asked that. We do plan to also put up a fence. Mm -hmm. We're also going to have, of course, ADT or some kind of security system there, mm -hmm. cameras, um, as well as someone on site. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, the, but the main thing would be to have an actual fence or gate mm -hmm. to help with that security measure. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Any other members have any questions? Uh, one question. This will serve a maximum of four people? Or, or individuals at one given time. Right. And you said short term. Short term being? It could be, like, for instance, I'll use my mom as an example. Sometime when she would come out of the hospital, if the nursing home wasn't available, they would still require her to um, have a place to stay for at least 30 days for rehab, um, which in that case, someone would come on site to do the rehab, but she needed a place to maybe stay. So that would be short term if it's available. Long term more so if it's just someone who wants um, some place to board, but they need help. So it could be someone, say they may be blind, 
but they just need someone to assist them daily, but they can pretty much function on their own, but they just want to have that independence of living. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Eric Nunsfer, do you wish to say anything? Uh, I'm just, I'm the owner. This is my daughter. State uh, your name for the record. My name is Ralph Martino. Thank you. Um, and the place that we are trying to get, like my wife suffered from dementia and Alzheimer's, and, and I thought it was a need for the area. And we don't have any urgent care in St. George. Um, we have to travel at least 20 to 30 miles to a hospital. And um, we will have staff there that dial nurses, and we have a registered nurse to give out medication and all that type of stuff. So there's a need, and this is what we want. And we're going to name it. Well, well that, I already have, moment. I got a. Um uh, exception, as you all probably see in my application packet, I already have an LLC, Frida Circle of Care, that was my mom's name. So I already have um, the foreign uh, certificates to do business in South Carolina. Okay. Anyone have any questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else here wish to speak for or against this project? Hearing none, we clear the public hearing closed. Any members have any questions of the administrator before we take a vote? Hearing none, the chair will at this time entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, based on the facts and this, what the staff have presented to us and according to the application, the applicants, I make a motion that we approve this request. The motion made it will approve. Um, this request, do you want to base that on the facts of the finding of the staff which recommended approval? Yes, based on the stacks on the facts, uh, I recommend approval. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. DeHay. Any discussion? I would just like to say that was probably one of the best presentations we've had. And I was thank you for that. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand and say aye. 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 Unanimous, the motion passed. At this time, Thank do we you. have any old business needs to come before the committee? Any yes, new sir. business needs to come before the committee? Nope. Uh, report to the chairman. I would just like to thank our two deputies for being here tonight. We thank you for that, but we also thank you for what you do every day. And uh, we appreciate you very much, and uh, may God bless you and your family. Um, any report from the zoning administrator? No, sir. Uh, any public comment? If not, motion uh, to adjourn. Move to move, adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Good evening, gentlemen. That was a great Same Good job, everybody. Oh. These are the ones that don't leave you exhausted by the time you leave. Yeah, but